I'm Colleen Anderson, and I'm reading Cinnabar, which was published in Shadow Atlas by Hex Publishers in November 2021. Cinnabar, Fantan Alley, Victoria, B.C. The bricks of Fantan Alley hold their history dear. Gambling halls, opium dens press close together. Their acrid and somnolent smoke wafts through busy brothels. Oh, the stories they can tell of gold rush years and the Chinese men who came to build the great Canadian Pacific Railway. This lane, so narrow one can reach from doorways to touch the other side, embraces merchant shops, steamy kitchens feeding hungry laborers, as do the captive sing-song girls, so the rumor goes. A slow-eyed dove leans out the window, showing off her trade. A vermilion comb adorns her splendid hair, with carved red lacquer bangles about her bird-like wrists. The men who come to admire her feed her more than money. Upon their adulation she thrives, soaking up their spirits. She may once have had another name besides that of a hundred men's wife. This flower girl they've named Cinnabar, as much for her ornaments as her sharp and acid wit. And men exiting befuddled, depleted after being administered a certain exquisite death. Cinnabar has not yet been poxed from the plying of her wares. Her startling scarlet and lustrous ebon hair draw every man's attention. Even Chung, a young cook who cleans, chops, and cooks the meals every day, he watches this caged bird he hopes to spring, and imagines her still pure. One day Cinnabar gazes at men, strolling by her perch. Time to time she pats a head, giggles when they turn to look. Chung, carrying a chicken, navigates the narrow lane. She winks at him and smiles, but does the same to several men. He stops as sunshine polishes her hair. She is his eternal light. He will have her, not a ribbon as a poor man's tie. It's all he can do. Cinnabar, he cries and clasps her hand. You are all that I desire. Marry me. I love you. I need you as my wife. Cinnabar hesitates. Then she laughs, pulling back her hand. You can't afford me, Chung, nor the jewelry that I crave. Be on your way, I'm needed here, and here is where I'll stay. Chung falls against the rough-hewn bricks as workers wander by. Spurned, he storms back to butchering hapless pigs and chickens. He hacks and slams the cleaver so it sticks in bone and wood. No matter how hard he works, he hears Cinnabar's contempt. Her voice lilts down the alley as she calls to other patrons. Cleaver in hand, Chung shoulders people walking single file. He squeezes in between, the walls framing his focused sight on that singing bird, Cinnabar. Oblivious, flutters eyes and flirts. Chung grabs her by that glossy hair, the crimson comb tumbling. She shrieks, his blade hacks her neck, fury spent in his blows as he stands with Cinnabar's head, eyes shocked and staring. Chung wakes to what he's done, drops her head to hide. Careening off red brick, he pushes cringing passers-by, the bloody deed revealed, splattered garnet, cleaver dripping. In another part of town he's caught and loops a final necktie. She needs no footnote in history as just a soiled dove, whose name is lost, but Chung will always flee the accusations. Tourists feel the frantic thrust as something invisible rushes past. He cannot escape his dreadful act, nor her poisonous vapors. Each day, Cinnabar hunts Chung, whose spirit doesn't dissipate. Her rage saturates Fantan's russet bricks, but she's never seen. And men who come to hear the tale may experience double vision. They feel fatigue and are drained, as if their life were leached. She loves her rich blood jewelry, content to stay in Fantan Alley. Cinnabar selects her visitors and filches tiny keepsakes from their smoky souls to relive her former glories.